This, my friends, is the Swish Edition. From their secret underground studio, this is the Swish Edition. We got a mouthful for you guys. Dale and Scott are in the studio on the mics, and, and, and they fired up the antenna. It has to come whether you like it or not. And if you're willing to show it, they'll take a picture of it. I actually think I might throw. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else in between, here are your new best friends. They're your hosts. It's very exciting for me because this is the best show ever made. Dale and Scott. Hey, Dale. What up? How are you? Eh. That's not good. I've been... More well rested. <laughs> I I understand. I understand. But are you? You must be very excited to be back in the studio. Well, of course. There's no other place I'd rather be. That's right. <laughs> Episode three twenty nine. It's the Swish edition for August tenth, and uh, Dale and Scott are back in the studio for another edition of the Swish edition. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun. It's fun. It and is fun. Whether or not I have to make you do it or not. <laughs> It's still fun. <laughs> Sometimes we don't always want to do it, but, you know, we do take time off every now and then. It's what the people want. It's what the people want. That's you know, right. This is what a celebrity feels like. And you want to be a celebrity. I tell you, celebrity is, aw- is awful. No, I awful don't. I, no, I'm, I'm happy to, to have my annual. An- I want the money, but anonymity. Anonymity. How do you an- say that word? Anonymity. 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 Okay. I can't say that word. Anonymity. I've got it. Believe me. <laughs> be anonymous. <laughs> be anonymous. Be be anonymous. Or you be could be anonymous. Be, you can be, be your recluse. A recluse. Yes. I he think made, it's recluse. He made fun of me because I said recluse earlier you, this week. You just really enunciate on the re. Recluse. You're a recluse. No, you're a recluse. Recluse. Is that recluse? You recluse. You you I live think. you live like a hermit. <laughs> Hey, so uh, in the past on the Swish Edition, we've talked about Cameo. You know, that's uh, where... I like that Yeah, website. it's where celebrities and... It's fun. Not-so-celebrities w- not sell their, their videos that you can you can get made... Well, it's like D-celebrities, which is my favorite. You actually <laughs> booked one. I've done a few. For me, you got Hal Sparks to say happy birthday to me once, and you got... Sherry Vine, the drag yes. queen, to say happy birthday to me I once. I swore yeah. I did another one for someone else, but I can't did you? remember. Because I haven't used it in a long time. There's a new company from Sweden that's giving Cameo a run for its money. It's called Mimo. Uh-oh. Dot me. Uh-oh. M-E-M-M-O dot M-E. It's a Swedish company. It's raised millions of dollars to do their startup earlier this year. And they've got some fairly interesting people i just wanted to go through a few of them uh celebrities have signed up to to hawk their wares they'll make a private video for you or yeah. for whoever you determine uh, a couple of them tori spelling of course we know her from 90210 hundred dollars you get uh, tori to do a video for you gilbert godfried mm-hmm. the comedian and actor 175 dollars now he is on the other one a lot of these are on yeah. both. That's right. Kevin Sorbo, who was Hercules, he's also a, a huge Republican, I believe. Eighty dollars for Kevin Sorbo. Eighty. <laughs> it's a bargain. <laughs> Carol Baskin from Tiger King. She was the wife, right? Yes. 100. No. She was not. No. She no? was not the wife. I but mean, who? How was she involved Tiger King with Tiger? Was a gay man. Well, okay. So how was she, she involved? Was, I believe she was hired as like an animal keeper. Okay. Like to feed him or but something. she made a name for herself. And because... her husband also joined her on this gig, and then yeah. he somehow disappeared, and the tigers ate him or something. I oh, don't know. That's... But he wasn't the wife. Oh, so, okay. So it was her husband that went, the tiger to, king went is, missing. Right, because the tiger king is gay. He's a gay man. In, j- in jail. Yes. Yeah, as far as I know. All right, so, and she was also on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> That's so Which is surprising, considering the culture that we're living in now. And knowing that these accusations are out there against her and that she was given the time of day. Right. 
And, it's and weird the, to me. Well, no, I'm glad she was on it, but it's weird to me. No, it that just she shows you that it. ABC has fallen to new depths. Like they're <laughs> trying to find stars. Stars. They need to cancel that damn show. It's the, becoming stupid. The word stars is very fluid yeah. these days. That's for sure. Okay, so if you want Carol Baskin to make you a video, it'll cost you $190. You know what? She may have been able to get that a year ago. Yeah. Not now. Gary Busey. Who has had all kinds of ups and downs. He is he's a little more expensive, three hundred and fifty dollars. We were just talking about Greece. It's one of your favorite, oh, one of your only favorite musicals because you're not a huge musical fan. It's not. It's not one of my only. It's maybe one of two. Right. My other one is Cry Baby. Right. Oh wow! I love you that. Sh- that. I love that day. movie. All right. So yeah. Greece, uh, Didi Khan, who played Frenchie on Greece. Eighty dollars. You can get her to make you a video. Uh, Kathy Najimy, who was in Hocus Pocus, way too expensive. She was on Veep. Uh, Two hundred and twenty dollars for her. Hell no. John <laughs> Schneider, who played uh, one of the Dukes on Dukes of Hazard, and way he was also expensive. Superman's father in Smallville. Three hundred dollars for You're John not dead Schneider. Yet. Hey, Ernie Hudson. We just saw him. Hey, Ernie Hudson Ernie from Hudson. Ghostbusters. One hundred and sixty-five dollars. That's my jam, right there. Where, where did we just see him? I said, "Hey, that is um, Ernie Hudson from Ghostbusters." Was it uh, Criminal Minds? No, it might have been. It was something. Maybe something that you watch on ID. May have been Criminal yeah. Minds. Sebastian Bach from the band Skid Row is one of the most expensive ones I've found. Four hundred and fifty dollars. Waste of money. Flavor Flav. Waste of money. Four hundred dollars for Flavor Flav. <laughs> and then this one kind of stuck out. And right. It's Mina Hawk. You guys don't know her name, but you know her you if know you her. are a fan of HGTV. Yeah, I like her. She and her mother are both redheads, and they do right. a show called Good Bones on HGTV. Dale and I have watched it a hundred times. <laughs> we love her and love her mother. Right. So if you want the daughter to do, her name is Mina, $120 for that. Anyway, so I just find this weird. I find it kind of funny that, and, and there's a bunch of housewives on there from Bravo yeah. who will do videos for you. There's a bunch of sports casters and some yeah. sports people and between this Mimo and Cameo, you can get almost anyone. Uh, yeah. D-list celebrity. Right. You're not going to get Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right, but I almost feel like that you don't want that. Because if, if someone if you want to give someone a happy birthday, you you want those lesser knowns that make you feel good, not just some superstar you're going to spend a thousand bucks on. Like, if money wasn't an issue, yeah. like, you could get Brad Pitt. Maybe it costs you $5,000, but would it be the same? No. As call- if you get Kathy uh, Griffin to do it. Now, that yes. would be fun. Kathy Griffin. Oh, you spend, poor Kathy Griffin. Uh, she's you, going through some shit now. She's going, you know, that girl has gone through some shit. Obviously, yeah. she made a huge mistake a couple of years ago with the severed tr- <laughs> Trump head. Right. She bounced back, and then she bounced back, and now she has lung cancer and had one of her lungs removed yeah. just last week. And never smoked. What's amazing, though, is that she's already back on social media and making videos. And Good for her. Yeah, she's uh, bouncing back. I haven't seen an update in the last couple of days because she's doing, I haven't been. She's on, doing okay. Yeah. She's doing okay. So I uh, don't know that she's on either one of these platforms. She's got a lot of money. That girl is not hurting. She's not poor. No. Uh, breaking news, if you guys didn't know, just yesterday, the judge in the Britney Spears case, um, obviously she, this woman hates Britney <laughs> because she keeps cutting her down. Um, Britney's new lawyer. She finally got her own lawyer. Finally. Um, was trying to get her evil father removed as a conservator from her estate, I guess. <laughs> what? Her conservatorship? Conservatorship. Trying right. to get her father out of it. And it was denied by this long-term judge. This long-term judge has been on this case for right. 10 years. It seems wrong to me. It seems Maybe right. we need it's, a new judge. No, no, this no, judge no. Hates I, I, I think I think this is the thing where we only know what we're being told. We don't know the whole thing. I mean, because what we're being told, there seems like there's obvious issues with the father who has taken advantage of his daughter and his money and it, or her money. From all accounts. And not right. So from all accounts. And he keeps, is paying himself more than right. he's giving her an that, allowance. But that's what we're being told. 
That's and you would think told. if this is a judge and, yeah. you know, there's there's got to be people you can have faith in and rely on and for people to tell the truth, right? It has to be a judge. I guess. So I'm assuming there's things here that we just have no idea what the hell's going on. I, I think, think she's think... fucking batshit crazy. No, I agree. I saw some of her TikToks. I... For one, she should probably be off TikTok. Why do people who are in the most precarious situation feel like they should talk to the media Put themselves on social media. That is I, the last fucking thing you want to do. I think I mentioned that last week. I said that Britney should stop posting. Just stop. Stop Just posting. go away. Just go away. Nobody Until the shit's done. Exactly. I agree. But I also feel sorry for her, and I think she needs to get out of this conservative. Well, of course. But I think she is maybe off the record, batshit crazy. But, but there's so the other, what? Let there's, her be batshit crazy. Right, but there's I the mean, other... But there's Johnny the other, Depp is batshit crazy. Yes. Right? But there's also the thing of is like people who are in power like a judge, right? And who have made these decisions for however long this has been going on. I have no idea. I don't care. 13 years. Right. Okay. And maybe it has finally come to light that the father is a dick and is doing all these wrong things. He's taking more money but, than she gets. But the pressure is coming from the people the people and I the could, people don't know I what could, they're talking about, right? And I could feel like if I was the person making this decision, is like I want this to die down because I don't want to make the decision and have people believe that it was the peer pressure that made that led to this to happen to feel like they can do this again. Right. Just let shit calm down. Let, let shit listen to Dale Blades. He says, "Let shit calm down." <laughs> Maybe that's what the judge is trying to do. Right. She wants the shit to calm down before they make any major decisions. If I was the judge, I would put a, like a sort of gag order on Brittany and the father, everyone that's involved, yeah. to say, Stop stay the hell out of the press. Posting. Stay off social media. Yeah. Go away. Agreed. We'll revisit in a year, but you have to go away. I agree with you, Dale. Yeah. For once, I agree with you. Uh, other breaking news, BravoCon. This is the best news ever. BravoCon 2021 <laughs> has been canceled because Yay! of COVID. Hooray. Outbreaks. The best thing that ever come out of COVID. Uh, if you guys don't know, Bravo is a network on <laughs> TV that's owned by NBC that has a lot of reality shows that I happen to love, like Shit. Million Dollar Listing and Housewives <laughs> and all kinds Shittiest of stuff. Shittiest network on cable. Anyway, they do this. They do this <laughs> big weekend. It was supposed to be October 15th through 17th in New York City where they... People can buy tickets and meet all their favorite Bravo stars from Top Chef and Below Deck and Vanderpump Rules. And uh, they've decided to cancel it because of COVID and the outbreaks that are happening. However, right. in related news, mm -hmm. I would like to point out, mm -hmm. and we've, you know, this is a point of contention in America right now. It That's really right. is. That's why I don't, is that why it's in red? Yes. The CDC just announced yesterday that more than 99. 0.99% of fully vaccinated people have not had a severe outbreak of COVID in the last several months. 99.99%. Mm -hmm. So what's happening right now in America that you're seeing on your news, you're mostly seeing on NBC and MSNBC right. and CNN, is that the outbreak, it's back. The pandemic is back as strong as ever. It's not, people. It really is not. The CDC is just saying right now that the numbers do not add up to what the media is projecting that it is. So 99.99% of the vaccinated people are completely fine. Right. Right. What they might be trying to do with these numbers and with this announcement that they made yesterday is to get more people to get vaccinated. Of course. Right. Right. 164 million Americans have been vaccinated so far for COVID, according to the CDC, and fewer than 0.001% of those people have been hospitalized with COVID. So that's about 1,500 people out of 164 million. <laughs> so if you're scared to go to the grocery store, you're an idiot. Right. Because you're not going to get COVID. I swear to God, anyone listening to the show is not going to get COVID if they're fully vaccinated. Because it's literally the smallest fucking... You're, you're more apt to get bitten by a shark in your backyard pool than you are to get this Delta variant if you're fully vaccinated. Right. That's what the CDC is saying. Mm, right? I guess. That's what these numbers say. And that's what they just released yesterday. 
So they want kids back in school next month. They want people to be safe. They, I mean, they're they're yes, they want you to wear masks in the grocery store and in concerts and stuff. Well, there are some people who are unable to get the vaccine who could be vulnerable. Well, then they should stay the fuck home. If you're vulnerable, I agree. no, I totally the agree. Home. If there's a pandemic and you've been vaccinated and you are unable to be, then you should make other arrangements and not let the other hundred and seventy. 270 million people suffer, suffer, not go to work and right. everything just shut you. down. Though, though, and I will, this is a little postscript to this. Reba McIntyre, who we just talked about last week when we were talking about Kelly Clarkson and her divorce, Reba McIntyre and her boyfriend just announced uh, the other day that they both got the Delta variant, even though they're fully vaccinated. Well, and that's they, a real thing. And they said it wasn't fun. No, no, and it's like you get you get sick, but so it is possible that you can get it. Well, that's what everyone's saying that you'll get sick and you'll feel bad for a while, but you're not going to die. You're not going to die. You're not going to die. Right. I don't know why we keep doing COVID stories because it's I hate not it. really what I want to do with this show, but it just seems to be it's so everything that is everything right now. I so know. how could we not talk about it? This winter is going to be shitty. I don't know. It doesn't have to be. It I don't care because I have be. nowhere I need to be. You're going to stay right here in the studio. <laughs> well, except for October when I go to the Outer Banks. <laughs> and, in, in, uh, and in December when I go to Key West. Oh, we're going back to Key West. you damn right. I don't care what happens. I don't care if I'm not allowed in the restaurant. I just want to be in my house in that little pool. With your private little pool. And I'm hoping it's warm. If not, I'm going to throw boiling water in there and I'm going to just flap around. I would like to see that. I want to see you flap around. <laughs> you remember uh, Bam Magara from uh, it's Jackass? It's Bam Margera. Margera mm -hmm. from Jackass. I, so I love this. I felt like I'd like to know when this started because I feel like that I was coming home from high school and Jackass was on the air, but I don't believe it was. I think this was after I graduated. But I love, I love it, love it, love it. I was like so consumed with it. I absolutely loved the show, and I loved all the films. They're freaking hilarious. Johnny Knoxville is great. So, so go on. So Bam is suing Johnny Knoxville, Paramount Pictures, MTV, and others because he was fired from the franchise. Mm -hmm. And the upcoming movie, which would be the fourth one in the series, called Jackass Forever. He's seeking millions of dollars in damages because he cites the inhumane, abusive, and discriminatory treatment that he's been uh, wrongfully put on, on him. Right. Because he was wrongfully terminated from his contract. And he's now no longer part of Jackass Forever, which is the fourth in the, the movie franchise. The suit says that Paramount Pictures signed him up for the fourth movie called Jackass Forever. And then conditioned him where he had to participate in a wellness agreement that basically said that he had to complete multiple daily drug tests right. to make sure that he wasn't on drugs. So apparently there's some kind of history here with him and drugs. And the producers of the movie and his co-stars wanted to make sure that he was well enough to compete and participate in this movie. And apparently he failed, <laughs> and they kicked him out, and, and now he's suing. So, which, which is weird, and I don't know if he has a leg to stand on. I was trying to quickly do a search. So I'm not 100% confident. I'm about 90% confident about what I'm about to say. But Bam Margera, after the big Jackass series, concluded, and then it went to films and stuff like that, like Bad Grandpa and all that stuff. Um, Bam Margera had his own series with his parents called Viva La Bam. Yes, and I watched it. I loved, I, it. I loved I, it. I thought it was hilarious. And if I was his parents, I would change the locks and I would right. disown the kid. Of course. But I believe that show was canceled because of his drug use. Right. So there's a history here. Yes. And there's a brand that has been made, right? There's a business that consumes this whole brand and he jeopardizes us i don't know if he has a leg to stand on he claims that back in 2019 spike jones who was the producer and knoxville who was uh his co-star accosted him and coerced him into signing this uh, draconian agreement <laughs> and that so he didn't really mean to sign it and he didn't really mean to 
um, say that he would do this drug testing stuff. So he says well, it's all not fair. Does that matter though? I don't know. So if you if you were coerced into signing it, right, and you have to participate in this drug test. However, if you weren't coerced and you were of sound mind, then you're basically you're telling me that you wouldn't have signed it anyway because you wouldn't partake in this wellness agreement. Right. So where's the loss? I don't know. I don't know that he has a leg to stand on. I so don't think if, he does. If he really is had fallen off the wagon, then then right. he probably doesn't have a leg to stand on. And let's on. just say I I've, I've seen some interview I've read some interviews with Johnny Knoxville and in the stupid shit that he does on TV, he's a really smart guy. Sure. When it comes to business, he's a smart guy. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. And he's protecting the brand. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so Bam, come on, Bam, pull it together. I liked him. I thought he was one of the funniest he ones funny. out of all of them. And I loved his show with his parents. Right. Love it. It was great. I didn't know back then that he had a drug problem. Right. I didn't well, know. Well, these all these people came out of the woodwork. These were people who had nothing. Right. Who were, like, discovered. Yes. And they were willing to do this crazy shit. Anything. And people loved it. And they like, got paid buku bucks. So like get their ball stable to the wall. Right. I mean so, literally. So if you're so if you're from that environment and you have nothing, right? right? Or maybe you're even lower middle class or middle class, all of a sudden you've been discovered. Yes. And there's this just money just flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing. There's there's no you need to be educated. You need to know how to manage all of this. Yeah. Not only that, celebrity too, which the I think bo- is just the bullshit. bottom. The bottom line is drugs are bad. Drugs are bad. Not all of them. Not all. <laughs> <laughs> Most drugs are bad. I bet. I bet Rihanna doesn't do drugs. <sighs> Maybe she does. I, I don't love know. This girl. Rihanna is our newest billionaire. Wow. You guys probably heard this last week. Uh, Forbes revealed last Wednesday, the day after our last show came. Out, all the good stuff comes out right after we put out an episode. So it's the same way with the other podcast. Yeah. Everything comes out. There's there's no good time to do one. This came out last Wednesday that Rihanna is now estimated her net worth is one point seven billion dollars. Holy moly. Mostly due to her Fenty beauty brand. Right. Everybody's making money on beauty products. Yeah. Not from their music, not right. from her acting. Not from her modeling. She's making money from fucking products. I think she's more legit. Not like that wannabe Jeffree Star. Yeah. There are se- Who's that? Oh, the the YouTube t- yeah. guy. Yes. This uh, $1.7 puts her as the second richest female entertainer behind only Oprah Winfrey. Only Oprah has more money as That's, a female. I mean, to be put in the Not same... Not black, s- just female. Yeah. Just put in the same sentence as that is pretty amazing. She's 33 years old, mm-hmm. for one. So younger than both of us. And when the paparazzi asked her earlier this week what she felt about her new <laughs> self-made billionaire status, her three words were, God is good. See, my, my three words would be different. What would your three words be? I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Right. I like that a lot. I'm rich, bitch. But no, she attributes it to God, I guess. I guess God likes beauty products. I I, I guess. I the mean, only thing that the only yeah, thing that I've seen her um the only thing I've seen her in as an actress is that um that movie with the ships. Battleship. Battleship. But has she done other stuff? I don't I don't know. I, I think she has. Um, but that's one of those movies, like like if I were to ask you, what's that movie that comes on that you're you're scrolling through the TV guide and you see it, you're gonna yeah. stop and you're gonna watch it. Battleship, Battleship is one is, of them. Yeah, Battleship is one of those for me. Yeah, um, because I've seen it so many times, so you don't really pay attention to it. But I thought she was really really good in it. Yeah, it's a fun. Movie. She she had a small part. She I mean she was big. Yeah, she didn't have she wasn't a main character, but I loved her in that, and she can act well. And I wish she would do more of it. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, we're going to continue talking about big money deals because Gordon Ramsay has just signed this a, motherfucker. Holy moly. I love Gordon Ramsay. Love him to death. I follow him on social media. I follow him on his sh- shows on Fox. He just signed a nine figure deal and I had to look that up. What is nine figures? It's at least 10 million, right? At least 10 million. So that it's 10 million or more that he signed with Fox. 
Gordon Ramsay has cooked up a major deal with Fox Entertainment um, to produce more shows and more stuff exclusively for the Rupert. Rupert. What is wrong with me? Jesus Christ. Rupert. Lips glued together. Rupert Murdoch owned network. Yes, there you go. (laughs) They now own 100% of Ramsay's existing television business. Uh, which is not surprising because they already produce Master Chef, Master Chef Junior, and Hell's Kitchen. All right. Well, is there somebody I can call? Because why can't I get Hotel Hell back? I know you want Hotel Hell back. He's also got a new show coming up called Next Level Chef, which is coming up to Fox. I don't oh. know what that means, Next Level Chef, but it's coming. It's a competition show. Can it's I coming chime soon. In? Can I chime in one second? Of course. This, is that this is Gordon Ram- our show? That Gordon Ramsay has teamed up, and if you have an iPhone and you subscribe to the Apple Arcade, is that Gordon Ramsay's has a new video, has a new um, iOS game coming out. And it's coming out in like a couple of weeks. What's the game? Is it like how how best to make a cheeseburger? So it's something about, it's something about cooking. I would assume. But it's fun. It's called, it's called Let's Cook. It's called, it's by MasterChef. It's a MasterChef. Let's cook. And Great. you and you do all these little little challenges. See, look at my camera or my phone. It's fun. I'm going to get it. It's not out yet. You should get it. It's just coming soon. Anyway, very excited for Gordon Ramsay. Love him to death. And if you guys don't know, he knows how to make the most amazing burger. And if you have been to Planet Hollywood in Vegas, he has Gordon Ramsay's burger there. And you can get the, his burgers. But you can also watch it and learn how to make it yourself on his YouTube. Have you considered... Um, signing up for one of his master classes. That would be good too. I would like to learn how to make more stuff. I, mean, I the, love him. I the, love him to death. Like the simplest things that we found out yeah. are scrambled eggs. Right. And were you not amazed? Um, There is a technique to making scrambled eggs. Which, like the perfect so scrambled egg. It's funny because you and I were just watching Ree Drummond, who is the prairie. I home, love Ree the Drummond. Prairie, what is she? Prairie She's woman? She's not the prairie. Prairie woman. <laughs> She does the Prairie Home Companion. No. Pioneer she, Woman. Pioneer Woman. All right. So the redheaded Pioneer Woman. Yeah. She was making scrambled eggs and she did it in a hot, hot pan, like high. Right. And did it in like 10 seconds. Right. That's not what Gordon Ramsay says. He says you do it on low, well, really slow and long. Well, and here's you get the thing. better scrambled eggs that right. way. But Gordon Ramsay was making scrambled eggs like for breakfast. Reed Drummond was making fried rice. I think that's a whole different thing. A whole different animal. A whole, whole different animal. But there's a, a big difference between Ray Drummond and Gordon Ramsay. Well, of course. In their style. Because Reed Drummond I mean, she uses, is cooking for the normal people. Right, and she uses... Gordon like, Ramsay is doing it for the chef wannabes. You think they could do this shit at home. Right, Reed Drummond... I mean, Gordon like, Ramsay... Look at me. Yeah, Gordon Ramsay's not using frozen tater no. tots. No frozen tater tots. And I think that's meals. why people like Pioneer Woman. We just watched that whole episode. She was sure. like, I'm going to show you how to utilize frozen... Your frozen foods the whole in, epi- your, in your freezer. The whole episode was about frozen and stuff. And it's perfect. It's it's all about economics and how you can feed a family on a budget. Yeah. Not filet mignon cooked the right way with an egg on top, and when you cut it, the yolk just <gasps> famously falls evenly over the whole <sighs> damn thing. Oh, that's the best. Right? <laughs> that's the best. You can't compare the two. 30 years That's after. like comparing you and me. We're just two different animals. We are two different animals. <laughs> That's why we're good together. 30 years after her death, Lucille Ball is getting her own series on Sirius XM and her own podcast. Dale just found the podcast um, just this afternoon. Yeah. It looks like they just started it because they're only like a couple of episodes out. So just this last Thursday, Sirius uh, started this uh, Channel 104. Everyone in America has Sirius. I mean, if you have, own a car, you probably have Sirius in your car. I have not been in a car with anyone who has not had Sirius. It's in every fucking car that's sold nowadays. Oh, it's in it, but I don't think a lot of people subscribe. Well, you and I I both, don't think Sirius XM is a very thriving business. Oh, I don't. I, I think you're wrong about that. I mean, you think, you think they're paying... You think they're paying um, 
what's his name? Howard Stern, $50 million a year because they're not thriving? I think they're stupid. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're talking about Howard Stern. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. hundred uh, Channel 104, you guys, right now. It started last Thursday for three weeks. It's called Let's Talk to Lucy. Back in the 1960s, Lucille Ball, this is post I Love Lucy, while she was doing Here's Lucy and other shows for but She says Lucy CBS. Arnaz. That's how she says herself on the no. radio. No. You're, she does. She said, this is Lucy Arnaz. I'll see you tomorrow. That's how she entered the thing. I, I seriously doubt that she said that, but I don't think she was ever. Her daughter is Lucy Arnaz. I, I don't think Lucy ever called herself that. I swear I heard that on the way to the beach. Yeah, I think you heard Lucy Arnaz, her daughter, introducing the segment. Yeah. Who, Lucy okay, Arnaz is still on. alive. Anyway, anyway, so back in the 60s, Lucy, Lucille Ball, recorded all these interviews with people like Frank Sinatra, Barbara Streisand, Dean Martin, Bing Crosby. We just heard one on the radio the other day with Gene Kelly. Right. Yeah. Uh, Carol Burnett. There was a bunch of them. Anyway, she produced these back in the 60s, and they ran on CBS radio. She did this in her spare time, and she just did it for fun. I mean, she was really busy running Desi Lou and producing her shows and well these were like talking to friends right yeah she was basically uh, talking to friends there were little interview shows and they're like 15 minutes long now they're on serious and they're going to be released as podcasts also so i think it's kind of fun you guys should check it out i love lucy it was fun to listen to i mean i couldn't relate to anything no but if you if you you love golden era of hollywood and you like you know 60 years ago it was not that far. It was the 1960s. Was that 60 years ago? I guess it might have been. Jeez. 70 years ago. Shit. That was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago. I mean, she's way dead. She died but in they 1989. Are right, but they yeah. are fun to listen to. They are fun to listen to, yeah. especially if it's someone that you like. Can I tell you that my sister, who's a huge Lucille Ball fan, I love Lucy fan, to yes. be more specific. Right. And in Atlantic City, uh, many years ago, at least 10 years ago, they rented out a convention center in one of the casinos and they brought the set and we went. It was kind of cool. That's very cool. It was kind of cool. I mean, yeah. considering I've only seen a couple, a handful of episodes, <gasps> but it's one of those sets that you can recognize. Like you could put, you could put, you can go through Ikea, right? Yeah. And Ikea sets up the little, little living rooms, but you make one as like Roseanne or I Love Lucy, you're going to say, I know that one. Right. But it was cool. It's just like if you go on the Warner Brothers uh, studio tour in Burbank, you can see the friend set. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Is, like, the At Central Perk. Yeah, there you go. They got that there, too. So this is cool. I would like to see that. I would like to go visit the I Love Lucy that set. Was a long, I think that, that was a while ago. Yeah. Well, if you guys want to watch the original I Love Lucy, it's on Paramount Plus. Hey. Get yourself a membership. Hey. Get yourself a membership. Uh, in related news to Lucy, if you guys are Lucy fans, uh, Amy Poehler is directing a documentary centered around Lucille Ball and uh, Desi Arnaz's complicated and loving relationship. So that's coming out soon from Howard, uh, Ron Howard's company, Imagine Entertainment. And there's also the Aaron Sorkin film, with Nicole Kidman and Javier Bardem, which is going to be a look uh, behind the scenes of one week in Lucy and Desi's life. It's called Being the Ricardos. That's coming out sometime next year. Uh -huh. I can't see Nicole Kidman as Lucille Ball, but it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. I love Aaron Sorkin. We love Aaron Sorkin's West Oh, Wing. he does great things. Um, the Newsroom. I mean, he's done uh, The American President. He's done so many great things. So I'm hoping he does Good with Desi and Lucy. Should be good. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Senator Marco Rubio, who is a, a very controversial figure wow. in the United States. He's the Republican senator from Florida. He wants American Airlines to rethink their free TikTok plan. <laughs> you guys may have heard this. American Airlines announced that they were going to allow everyone on American Airlines flights 30 free minutes of access to TikTok, no matter whether or not they paid for Wi-Fi or not. As you know, if you get on an American Airlines flight, you need to pay if you want Wi-Fi access. Right. But everyone gets 30 minutes free to look at TikTok on their phone. I think that's a horrible thing. Because people are going to become frustrated because you're going to have a bunch of kids on there. And, you know, the, the, the Wi-Fi on a plane is limited anyway, right? So if you have all these people streaming 
even if it's short clips of video, it's not going to work. The hell, the last two American Airlines flights that we took, the damn in-flight entertainment didn't even work. Senator Rubio. <laughs> I, I, is it because of COVID? I agree. <laughs> I'm I, tired of hearing that as an I, excuse. I agree with you. Senator Rubio is pointing out that there is an active U.S. federal but, federal government investigation over TikTok's usage uh, because they're abusing users' data. Well, there's a Chinese company, there, everyone. So yeah, as as depending on whatever your feelings are on Ted Cruz, he I think he's a little right here. You just said Ted Cruz. We're talking about Marco Rubio. Marco Rubio. They're all the same, uh, regardless of what you think of him. I think there is a legit. I think there is a cautionary legit. tale. Yes, here for Americans, like we like we probably should not be using it. I stopped using it yeah. about a month ago. I stopped yeah. using TikTok because I realized that it they are abusing uh, both India. The country of India has banned TikTok. Wow. The United Kingdom and the European Union have both filed a lawsuit against the sinister company they call it, <laughs> uh, and they're seeking billions of dollars in damages because of the Chinese government using users data against them i mean it's it's kind of kind of crazy yeah um you know trump also tried to put a stop to tiktok right no I, um he, and maybe that's one of the good things that he tried to do because it, maybe, it is it is a sinister country maybe and a sinister uh, product what i encourage anyone to do is just google tiktok china and, and read some articles from some reputable sources to understand the cautions, precautions that you should take with using TikTok. Well, after uh, Marco Rubio came out against this plan that American Airlines has put into place, American Airlines put out a statement. They said, we do not share any data with TikTok through this offering, nor do we have a direct commercial relationship with the company. So I believe that because the Wi-Fi that they're using, it, it's not like it's going through the pilot's terminal. No, I, I don't think that... <laughs> it's completely separate from... But, but however, if you're looking at TikTok and they have access to your phone through the TikTok app, could they get all your shit? Could they get your banking information? Could they get your yeah. contacts? Could right. they get your naked pictures that you have in your hidden file? Right. I mean, who knows? Privacy is 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 not a big thing in the 20th century. Well, privacy, 21st does, century. privacy doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It just doesn't. But guess what does? Piracy. Piracy, yes. And I'm actually very upset about this. And it, it, it kind of makes me very sad. You wonder why we pay so much for the services that we pay for. Yeah. Despite the growing <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Despite the growing availability of legal streaming options nowadays. We we do a whole show about streaming video, right? Mm -hmm. Called the Binge Bomb Podcast. Piracy statistics show that infringement has really become number one. Cyber criminals are stealing so much pirated video right now. Over 230 billion views per year. Jesus. More than 80% of global online piracy can be attributed to the illegal streaming services. Yeah. So people stealing HBO Max, people stealing Netflix. Digital video piracy is costing the U.S. economy over almost thirty billion dollars per year. No, yeah, between thirty, between thirty and, and seventy-one. 71 yeah, yeah, that's a big, that's a big difference right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they, they, they. This new study says that it's taking up about twenty-five percent of the global bandwidth of people illegally watching shit. Right. We don't have to go through all these numbers. But basically, one third of music consumers in the U.S. are apparently stealing music. That's 57 million Americans are stealing music. They're right. not paying for it. And 32% of all piracy is coming from the streaming networks. It's kind of sick. It's kind of sad that the U.S. is the number one bad guy in we in are piracy. number one is that what you're saying we are yeah, number one we're number okay. one russia's number two and india is number three of the worst offenders and china which we always thought were the worst offenders in this they were stealing shit they're not even in the top 10 yeah but people this is this is what i say i it's not just sharing your, your network if you're sharing your netflix password with your mother-in-law that's one thing but if you're literally going online to find a free version of Jungle Cruise right. that you can download to your computer so that you don't have to pay the $30 to watch it, right. 
You're stealing. You're a piece of shit. You're stealing. It's called stealing, and it is illegal. And they say that t- you're 28 more times likely to get a malware right. as part of this download if you're but getting this stuff for free here's from my some, thing. one of if, these sites. If the government wants to stop this, right, because we know the companies do. So, so if the so if the FCC wants to get involved, right? Yeah. You remember that old warning on VHS tapes? Yeah. Uh, if you the FBI warning, the FBI yeah. warning, blah blah blah. And so there was like a ten, like a I don't know, a year in prison and ten thousand right. dollars. Yes. Like if they'd be willing to put up a billboard, say turn in people who are stealing media, yeah. and we'll give you half of the ten thousand dollar thing, this shit would end. But it's costing because I would turn I would turn money. people in tomorrow. <laughs> I would feel so. I, I don't understand. I don't like it. I don't. I don't even steal a donut from the no. It's grocery horrible. store. I would feel so guilty about it, and I wouldn't enjoy that donut if I stole it. So how can you sit at your house and watch Jungle Cruise? Because people feel entitled. There's no personal responsibility in this country you're anymore. Stealing, I mean, that's a whole other podcast. It, and right? It's you're horrible. stealing. I just don't understand my fellow Americans who feel comfortable so, stealing things. Basically, to those people yes. who are doing that, you have to think. It's like, okay, you have a lawnmower sitting outside, right? Yeah. I'm just going to jump. I'm just going to take it. Right. I'm just going to take it. I'm going to use it. Yeah. I'll bring it back, but I'm. But you're not going to know when. Right. I'm going I'm to stay in the spare bedroom that you have in the back. Right. I'm going to leave, but not tell you when. Right. I saw that open door at the Best Western. I'm just going to go in there and right. sleep for the night without right. paying for the room. It's like, it's the same kind of shit. There's right? no personal responsibility. No, it's horrible. People suck. People suck. Why do I bring that up? I don't know why. <laughs> What's crazier than that is Disney's new Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser hotel prices. I love I, this oh and my I want to go. Y'all, I want to <laughs> go too. So if you guys don't know the story, I think we've talked about it on the show before. Star War, uh, Disney World down in Florida is building this new hotel. It's going to be like a cruise ship, basically. Right. So you're going to get on. You have to go for two nights. <laughs> it's like a, a sand It's a <laughs> Right. It's a minimum of two nights. You can't go for less. Uh, and it's an experience. Um, I think it looks cool. Yeah. You're going. To, it's an ongoing, immersive, interactive entertainment experience so it's basically getting on a star cruiser ship right Right. so there's going to be like lightsaber battles there's going to be uh dinners that you go to everything's included so your drinks are included and your food is included and your rooms included like a cruise ship right but it's very fucking expensive and (laughs) and average joe from des moines is not going to be able to afford no for two guests the star cruiser that doesn't mean you can steal it no don't steal it the two guests uh, will cost forty eight hundred dollars. For crazy. three guests, fifty two hundred dollars. For four guests, six thousand dollars. For your two night stay. Wait, but so how much is it for a family of four right now to go to Disney World? I don't know. Is but it six grand? It it, it could be <laughs> a lot, um, but I think it's about six grand for like five or six nights. But you're only getting two for this. Yeah, but you are getting passes to Disney's Hollywood Studios because this is being going to be connected to Disney's Hollywood Studios. You're also going to get uh, These passes houses in Florida. Yeah, that's where Disney's Hollywood Studios is, and you're also going to get um, passes to Star Wars Galaxy Edge, which is the new Star Wars themed area at uh, uh, Hollywood Studios. So yeah, yeah, we're talking about Florida here, not Disneyland. Uh, this is where the hotel is going to be. So it's going to be like a cruise ship. There's a couple of pictures here on the next page. You're going to, I mean, you're basically going to feel like you're on a spaceship. It looks like a lot of fun, but here's the thing. I've seen, I've seen these mock-up pictures of what they anticipate the, the interior to look like and what you the might cabin, experience on yeah, the cabins. What the hell does the outside look like? It, like, is it going to be modeled after the, I don't know. One, I was, I was going to say the enterprise, but that's not right. Yeah. I don't know that you're going to see the outside. I think you're going to go into some kind of time loop and be uh, transported up to the ship, and you're not going to know where you are. I yeah. see. But when you're on it, you can't get. I don't think you can get off. <laughs> I think it's like a kind of a. It's a two night thing. You have to do the two night thing. Right. So why couldn't they do this yeah. same thing and put it on a cruise ship? Close in the entire ship. You can't see the outside. You can't go outside. And it was like. Brrr. Welcome to Bermuda. 
And you like beam everybody out of the ship. And you're in Bermuda. I think that's what they're going to do. No. I don't know. That's all I got. I mean, I had more, but we're hungry. We've already gone 45 minutes, so <laughs> that's enough. I was going to talk about Jeopardy, but nobody yeah, cares we don't, about yeah, that. No one cares about that. Um, anyway, so glad you guys came back uh, for all our ranting and raving. It's fun, though. A right? rant, yes. A rave. Uh, I don't Did we know. rave about anything? <laughs> I, I guess we so. didn't this week. <laughs> no. We're gonna, no. All right, we're going to try to rave <laughs> about something next week. Yeah, we'll find something that we're right. excited about. That's right. Well, we're excited about Binge Bomb. Listen to Binge Bomb Podcast. It's coming up this Friday. We talk about streaming video. Word. Right? Yeah, and we're going to say don't steal it. Don't don't steal anything. <laughs> don't steal anything. How do you say that word? Anonymity. 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 I can't say that word. Anonymity. I've got it. Believe me.